Welcome to the BlueWorks Live September 2017 release preview session. I'm Margaret Thorpe, BlueWorks Live Offering Manager, and today I'm going to be giving you an overview of the BlueWorks Live release that's coming out this weekend on Saturday, September 30th. So this release of BlueWorks Live includes various productivity enhancements, uh, some improvements to the BlueWorks Live exports, and strength and support for automated provisioning. Um, so editors can directly paste screenshots into rich text documentation now using either Chrome or Firefox browsers. Um, the user experience is now consistent across the diagram and documentation views um, as far as navigation to linked artifacts is concerned. The Where Use tool is readily available for editors and contributors to query the usage of artifact details in both the diagram and the documentation views. And viewers now see a more readable display of artifact details when viewing process and decision diagrams. As far as the um, improvements to exports and APIs, the space export uh, now includes the space hierarchy for artifacts and subspaces to facilitate the merging of multiple uh, Microsoft Excel space export files. And the glossary export now includes links to glossary items, as does the glossary values API. Um, and the automated provisioning support enhancements that we've made with this release are, um, there are a couple. Basically, the user provisioning and the managed group APIs both now support the removal of users from user groups. Um, and the Manage Group API now supports restoring archived user groups. So let's take a closer look at these enhancements. First off, let's take a look at a few things that we hope will make the jobs of editors, contributors, and viewers a little bit easier. Um, so as I mentioned, editors can now directly paste screenshots into rich text documentation in BlueWorks Live. So to do this, first you take a screenshot using any number of tools that save images to the clipboard. Um, you could copy images out of Word, PowerPoint, Paint, PDF, or others. You could use the copy function of browsers like Firefox or Chrome or Internet Explorer. Um, you could use built-in functions like Print Screen, or you could use any number of screen capture tools like SameTime, the snipping tool uh, from Microsoft or Snagit um, from, from TechSmith. Now, once you've captured the image to your clipboard, you can paste it into the BlueWorks Live Rich Text Editor using either Control V or Paste from the menu. Um, but be aware that this doesn't work in Internet Explorer. So just, uh, you know, something to, to be aware of if you're a, an IE user, unfortunately. Internet Explorer won't paste from the clipboard, um, so you'll need to be running BlueWorks Live in either Chrome or Firefox uh, to use this feature. So you can paste your screenshots into the BlueWorks Live Rich Text Editor by right-clicking and selecting Paste from the menu, or by pressing Control V. And so here you can see in the in the uh, screen in the in the chart here, the slide, um, that I've positioned my cursor at the point that I want the image to be inserted and I've right clicked and selected paste from the menu. And then you can see that the image is then inserted right where my cursor was positioned. So that's the way it works. Um, now when you paste the screenshot into the rich text editor this way, BlueWorks Live will automatically create a file containing your image and it attaches that file to the activity, gateway, blueprint, or post, or whatever, you know, wherever the documentation um, is that's associated, that it's associated with. Um, and the file name that BlueWorks Live generates for this file will contain the name of the item along with a unique ID, um, as well as the type of the file, so doc image. Um, is, is what you'll see at the beginning of all of these uh, generated image files. Um, so for example, here you see that a file has been created for the screenshot that I, that I just pasted in the last slide, and it's been attached to the pre-qualify vehicle activity. And I can tell from the file name that it was automatically generated by BlueWorks Live for a screenshot, um, and that it's associated with pre-qualify vehicle. Um, now, there's one thing that, uh, that's important to keep in mind if you're going to be using this feature. Uh, um, 
is that if you're within the rich text editor and you delete an image that you pasted, or if you undo a paste, um, Blueworks Live will not automatically delete the attached file. You will need to delete that yourself. Okay. Um, now, as far as Blueworks Live admins are concerned, these automatically generated image files will show up in the file management tab of the admin console like any other attachment files. And here in the example, you can see the file that was generated on previous slides. You can see that it's an active file and you can see the blueprint that it's being used by. So when you're cleaning up unused files, uh, you'll be able to see whether or not these files are attached to items. And if not, you can just delete them with the rest of your unused files. So that's the new screenshot paste feature. Um, now viewers will notice that activity details are presented in a more readable format now uh, within the BlueWorks Live um, view pane and documentation view. So property names are bolded as you can see here uh, and linked artifacts are shown as hyperlinks in blue and can be cl clicked on directly to navigate to the link blueprint or policy or decision uh, whatever the artifact is that's, that it's linking to. And, and as I said, this is the case, as you can see here, in both the view pane of the process diagram, um, as well as the documentation view of the process. And editors and contributors uh, will now see the Where Use tool, that little icon out there to the right of the um, artifact name. Uh, so it'll be available for all linked artifacts and can be accessed here in the view pane of the diagram, as well as the documentation view. And of course, by clicking on the Where Used icon, uh, which is highlighted here on the slide, you'll be shown everywhere that that artifact is being used. So, um, you know, for those of you that haven't used the Where Used tool, you know, then you can click on any one of these usages and you'll be taken directly to the referenced artifact. So those are the productivity enhancements for this release. Um, and now I'd like to mention a couple of improvements that we've made to the exports and the APIs. So first off, we've enhanced the space export. So when you export a, export a space to Excel, if you choose to include subspaces, then BlueWorks Live will create a separate Excel file, a .xls, for each space, um, and a zip file with a nested folder structure that reflects that space hierarchy. Um, so here at the top of the page, you can see on the left that I've exported a space and I've checked the option to include subspaces. And if you look to the right, you'll see the nested folder structure containing a file for each space that, that BlueWorks Live um, creates as part of the export. Um, and so now what we've done with this release is we've just included the space hierarchy as a column within the exported Excel file. Um, to make it easier to merge space info from multiple files because you know you can't just rely on the name of the artifact because there may be artifacts with the same name in different spaces um, and so you need obviously if you're going to be merging your excel files you need to be able to know what uh, at what point in the hierarchy the artifact is to identify it uniquely to identify it to identify it properly um, and when you export the glossary to excel now the links to the glossary values are also included in the export. So in this example, I've chosen to export the system property values from the glossary. And you can see the URL out there in the rightmost uh, column of the worksheet. And clicking on that link in the file, of course, will take you to that glossary item in the BlueWorks Live glossary. So those, and then we've also added the link to the glossary export API. Um, same thing. So for those of you who are not familiar with the Glossary Values API, it returns a list of glossary values that match the criteria that you specify. And as you can see in the query here, I've requested all system property values and the URL is returned along with all the rest of the info about this system value as you see here at the bottom of the, um, of the blue, blue part of the highlighted part of the screen. So as I mentioned, we also made a couple of updates to the user management APIs, which some customers use to automate the provisioning of their users. Basically, there was no way to remove a user from a group or restore an archive group using these APIs. Um, and these customers needed that capability in order to do things like 
automatically update a BlueWorks Live user group according to users found in an LDAP group, for example, um, or, or constantly updating, creating user groups based on email domains where obviously the email domains are, the, the membership of those email domains is changing constantly, things like that. So, um, so basically, the, the Manage Group API which previously allowed the retrieval, update, and archival of user groups, now also allows the removal of a user from a user group, as well as the restoring of an archived user group. So in the first example here, you can see that I'm using the delete method of this API to remove two specific users from the admin user group. And then in the second example, you can see that I'm using the put method to activate or restore an archived group. And similarly, the provision user API previously allowed retrieval, update, and archival of users. Um, and now it also allows the removal of a user from a user group. So here in the first example, you can see that I'm using the delete method of this API to remove a user from all user groups. And in the second example, you can see that I'm using the delete method to remove a user from a couple of specific user groups. So those are the updates to the the APIs, and basically that's the September release. Um, and let me just summarize really quickly what we've seen today. So we've seen that editors can directly paste screenshots into their rich test, doc text documentation. We've seen how navigating to linked artifacts is the same across the diagram and documentation views for everybody now, so editors, contributors, and viewers. We saw that the where use tool is, is obvious and clearly accessible to editors and contributors in both the diagram and documentation views. And we saw that viewers have a more readable display of details in the diagram view pane and, and doc documentation um, view. So we also saw that the space export now includes space hierarchy for artifacts and subspaces and that the glossary export includes links to glossary items um, as does the glossary values API. And then finally, we saw that the user management APIs have been updated to support the removal of user from user groups, as well as the archiving of user groups. So um, with that, I'd like to end my presentation. And um, I'll open up the line uh, for any questions. Just give me a moment to, to take everybody out of broadcast mode. Um, hang on. So thanks so much.